In this video, I'm going to be defining the terms equilibrium, entropy, and evolution in terms of change. The term equilibrium is pretty straightforward. I think everyone knows what this means. In the beginning was equilibrium, and God said, let there be loss of equilibrium. In the beginning was unchanging, and God said, let there be change. When something is in equilibrium, it is said to be in an unchanging state. When something is continuously changing states, it is said to be out of equilibrium. So let's just put this new term equilibrium into the context of change. Equilibrium is that which is unchanging. Change can now be defined in terms of equilibrium as loss of equilibrium. Change is loss of equilibrium. Inertia is resistance to change. And time, as usual, is an emergent property of change. So now the picture is a bit more clear. Inertia and equilibrium are not the same thing. Equilibrium is the state of unchanging. Inertia is resistance to change of state. So what about entropy? Let's start with a typical mainstream definition of entropy. Entropy is a measure of the unavailable energy in a closed thermodynamic system, which is usually considered to be a measure of the system's disorder. So there are two points to make here. This definition is only for closed thermodynamic systems and Entropy is generally associated with a, move, with a move from an ordered system to a disordered system. Also, the second law of thermodynamics states that in isolated systems, the total entropy can never decrease over time. In other words, the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy, only applies to isolated systems and closed systems. But the universe, that is nature, is not an isolated system and it is not a closed system. Natural systems are usually described as far from equilibrium. Here is another definition. Entropy, the degradation of matter and energy in the universe to an ultimate state of inert uniformity. Or this one the general trend of the universe towards death and disorder. Again, traditional thermodynamics focuses on the study of closed, isolated systems, which, if given enough time, always approach stable states of equilibrium. Systems in nature, however, are not isolated and not closed systems. Natural systems are far from equilibrium and often develop into a multitude of states. But why? Why does nature seem to go against the standard definition of entropy? Why does evolution, for example, always moves towards more complexity over time? Why does life appear to become more ordered as time goes on? This is the big $60 billion question that everyone would like to have an answer to. So, if nature, i.e. the universe, isn't a closed, isolated system, then what kind of system is it? In the cosmology that I'm proposing, the universe isn't a closed system, and it isn't an open system either. It is both. To explain this, I'm going to bring in my friend here, the Mendelbrot set. Everything I know about the universe, I learned from the Mendelbrot set. The Mendelbrot set helped me to understand black holes. The Mendelbrot set helped me to understand dark matter and dark energy. The Mendelbrot set helped me understand Ken Wheeler's Missing Secrets of Magnetism and Robert Distinti's universe. It helped me to understand field incommensurability. Ken Wheeler uses the term field incommensurability, but I generalize it to the principle of incommensurability. The Mendelbrot set helped me understand all these things. Here, the central black hole region corresponds to the closed domain. And the outer gradient region corresponds to the open domain. 
exactly between the open domain and the closed domain is the domain separator, or what I call the event horizon. The Mendelbrot set is a graphical representation of an open, closed system. The open domain and the closed domains are incommensurate domains. They are incommensurate in principle. Closed domains on their own are not very interesting. Open domains on their own are also not very interesting. But when you combine open domains and closed domains, then something interesting happens. For example, what is the most interesting part of the Mendelbrot set? Is it the central enclosed black region? Is it the outer gradient region? No, it is neither. The most interesting part of the Mendelbrot set is the domain separator. This is where all the action is. All those pretty fractal patterns that we're also familiar with are found close to the edge of the domain separator. This, I argue, is what nature is doing. But I digress. What does all of this have to do with entropy? Here's the point. Clearly, entropy as a dissipative phenomenon does not apply to open-closed systems. In other words, the standard thermodynamic definition of entropy does not apply to nature. Here is something else from Wikipedia on entropy. Entropy is the only quantity of the physical sciences that requires a particular direction of time, sometimes called the arrow of time. So entropy has an arrow. What else has an arrow? Well, time, of course, as we experience it, has an arrow. With this information, I can now define entropy in terms of change as follows. Entropy means that change cannot be undone. Entropic change is change that cannot be undone. As one cannot unbreak a glass or unborn a baby, one cannot undo entropic change. Let's think about that for a second. As one cannot unbreak a glass or unborn a baby, one cannot undo entropic change. Entropic change cannot be undone. Entropic change is irreversible change. This definition is the only definition of entropy that can be applied to an open closed system like nature. So now we can add entropy to the list of definitions defined in terms of change. Equilibrium is that which is unchanging. Change is loss of equilibrium. Inertia is resistance to change or resistance to loss of equilibrium. Entropy is irreversible change or change that cannot be undone. And time, as always, is an emergent property of change. Time is an emergent property of entropic change. So what about evolution? Evolution is continuous, irreversible change over time, or continuous entropic change over time. This definition of evolution cannot be disputed. When we look at the evolution of the universe, and when we look at the evolution of life on this planet, on planet Earth, what do we observe? We observe continuous, irreversible change over time. Evolution cannot be undone. Nature always moves forward. It never goes back. So now we can add one more term to our list of terms defined in terms of change. Equilibrium, that which is unchanging. Change, loss of equilibrium. Inertia, resistance to change. Entropy, irreversible change. Time is an emergent property of entropic change or irreversible change. This is what gives us the arrow of time. And now evolution is continuous entropic change over time. 
Using this logic, I'm going to define a whole bunch more terms in terms of change. Iteration, the agent of change. It is the agent of entropic, irreversible change. Iteration in chaotic systems always generates something new. Iteration is the agent of entropic change. Oscillation, regular or repeating change. Motivation, desire for change. The need for change is a great motivator. Instinct is reaction to change, especially and particularly sudden change. Instinct is a reaction to sudden change. Realism, the realization that change exists. Existentialism, the will to manifest change. Life is irreversible, unknowable, continuous change. Irreversible, unknowable, continuous change is what we perceive as life. Death is loss of irreversible, unknowable, continuous change. Loss of life is loss of irreversible, unknowable, continuous change. And last but not least, suffering, the unwillingness to accept change. Unnecessary suffering is caused by our unwillingness to accept change. Change is built into the equation. Change is evolution. Life is change. Life is changing. Everything is changing and we need to accept that. Climate changes. Weather changes. The unwillingness to accept change causes unnecessary suffering.